you study it now. So before we actually get started with the debate round, would you mind sharing any experience you may have with debate, or if there's anything specific you would like us to do or not do in today's debate round? I appreciate that, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I am an LD judge <laughs> who got roped into TP, and I've not judged TP for three years, so I'm a little rusty. All right. Come slow, please, and then have a great time. Thank you. All right, awesome, thank you. All right then, well, if everybody's ready, yeah. I'll go ahead and get started. Howard Zinn once said, it's not right to respond to terrorism by terrorizing other people. And furthermore, it's not going to help. How much common sense does it take to know that you cannot end terrorism by indiscriminately dropping bombs? Because my partner and I agree with Mr. Zinn and believe that we can't end terrorism by creating it, we, that we stand resolved that the United States federal government should substantially reform its foreign military presence and or foreign military commitments. For the sake of clarity, let's begin with definitions from the freedictionary.com in 2013. Military is performed or supported by the armed forces. 
Commitment is defined as the act of binding yourself to a course of action. The purpose of our case will be examining U.S. drone policy. There are two specific types of drone strikes that will be mentioned often throughout the round. The first is called a personality strike. We find the definition of a personality strike from the Center for Civilians in Conflict and Columbia Law School in 2012. Quote, in a personality strike, the U.S. targets an individual whose identity is known. According to U.S. officials, when the strike is conducted, those making the decision to engage must have a high degree of confidence that the particular individual is present, unquote. Our debate today is going to focus on the second type of strike, which is called a signature strike. John Glasser described signature strikes in June 2012, saying, quote, Signature strikes are drone bombings that target individuals the administration cannot identify. Decisions to kill a person or group of people in these countries are based on suspicious behavior, a loosely defined judgment that would give the administration carte blanche to kill whoever they wanted, whoever it pleases, unquote. Now we will look at what is taking place in the status quo by examining inherency. Right now, the United States conducts drone strikes in Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia, and these strikes have significantly increased over the past four years. Our inherency point is that signature strikes are the majority. Signature strikes are the majority. From Adam Antonis with the Wall Street Journal in 2011, he says, quote, signature strikes target groups of men believed to be militants associated with terrorist groups, but whose identities aren't always known. The bulk, of C uh, the bulk of drone strikes are signature strikes, unquote. We as the affirmative team propose that we reform this drone policy, and we provide a plan for doing so, to be passed by Congress and the President through any necessary constitutional means. Our mandate is to end signature strikes, end signature strikes. U.S. drones will no longer be allowed to carry out signature strikes in any country. Personality strikes will still be authorized, but limited to the extent necessary to eliminate high-value target terrorists who are actively plotting against the United States. This plan will take effect immediately upon an affirmative ballot. No funding is needed as the plan is purely legislative. The affirmative team reserves the right to clarify this plan as needed. The current drone program has disastrous consequences for the United States, and it needs to be changed, as we see in the justifications for the action. Justification one is terrorism is increasing. Terrorism is increasing. From Scott Shane with the New York Times in 2012. <coughs> Quote, for several years, first in Pakistan and later in Yemen, in addition to personality <coughs> strikes against named terrorists, the CIA and the military have carried out signature strikes against groups of suspected unknown militants. Experts say the strikes are deeply unpopular, both in Pakistan and Yemen. The strike strategy is backfiring. In Yemen, Al-Qaeda is actually expanding, in part because of the backlash against the strikes, unquote. What this means is that our national security is hurt by our own drone program. Rather than destroying terrorism, signature drone strikes are counterproductive and actually increase terror. Justification two is the U.S. reputation is hurt. U.S. reputation is hurt. From John Glasser in 2012, quote, House members warned that the signature strikes can generate powerful and enduring anti-American sentiment. We are concerned that the use of such signature strikes could raise the risk of killing innocent civilians or individuals who may have no relationship to attacks on the United States, they wrote. The implications of the use of drones for our national security are profound. They are faceless ambassadors that cause civilian deaths and are frequently the only direct contact with Americans that the targeted communities have, unquote. The impact of this is that we have weakened credibility and strained relationships. Weakened credibility and strained relationships. From Professor James Cavarro and Stephen Sonnenberg in 2012, quote, the significant global opposition to drone strikes also erodes U.S. credibility in the international community. Drone strikes weaken the standing of the U.S. in the world, straining its relationships with allies, and making it more difficult for it to build multilateral alliances to tackle pressing global challenges, unquote. From the above justification, it is plain to see that signature strikes hurt American interests. This leads us to justification three. Signature strikes should be eliminated. Signature strikes should be eliminated. Many advoc advocates 
Many experts advocate this elimination. One of these advocates, Robert Rayner, headed the CIA's Counterterrorism Center from 2004 to 2006 and was previously a CIA station chief in Pakistan. Paul Harris quotes Mr. Rayner in June of 2012, saying, quote, Robert Rayner has told that the drone program is targeted too broadly. The drone program needs to be targeted much more finely. We have been seduced by them, and the unintended consequences of our actions are going to outweigh the intended consequences, Grainer said in an interview. Grainer emphasized that the use of drones was a valuable tool in tackling terrorism, but only when used against specific identified targets, who have been tracked and monitored to a place where a strike is feasible. Recent media revelations about Obama's program have revealed a more widespread use of the strike capability, including the categorizing of all military-age males in a strike zone of a target as militants." Unquote. The second advocate of the elimination of signature strikes is Dr. Micah Zanko, a PhD and fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. On January 9, 2013, he said, quote, in fact, for most of the individuals who are killed, the United States doesn't know their name. They're individuals who, through patterns of behavior, are determined to look like suspected militants or terrorist groups. The United States should end the practice of signature strikes. It should only target those individuals who they say they're targeting, who are a significant and imminent threat to the United States. The U.S. is establishing a precedent that other nations will follow. In a world characterized by the use of drones, by drones used with little transparency or little constraint, would be one that we don't want to live in, unquote. By conducting signature strikes, the United States is using a drone policy that creates terrorism and hurts our international reputation. The time is now. The U.S. government needs to follow the experts' advice and end our signature drone strikes. Thank you, and I must be ready for cross-examination. I'm doing wonderful, thank you. Just a couple questions for oh, also, congrats on bringing two hour runs. Yeah, you too. Three little hour runs, I guess. <laughs> Just a couple <laughs> questions for your speech. First off, I'll copy real quick. Absolutely. Thank, thank you so much. All right, so let's start. To, uh, let's start with a uh, quick question of Todd Kelly. Now, do you justify your plan under presence or commitments? Um, essentially, it's a commitment. If you go back to our definition of commitment, it's the act of binding yourself to a course of action. We have bound ourselves to the course of action of drone strike. Okay, so, so it is a commitment. Okay, so it's not under presence and under commitments. It's, it is under commitments, and it also is our presence as well. But we're mainly dealing with the commitment All right. in our case. All right, awesome. Thank you. Now you said that the bulk of the drone strikes right now are signature strikes, correct? Correct. How many exactly? How many exactly? I believe um, we have specifics at the table for you, but about 292 in the last couple of years. Okay. Uh, actually, I think since President Obama okay. became president, and that's out of about 400. Okay. Okay. So it's so 292 of about 400. Yeah. So that's about a three to one signature strike to personality strike. Ratio. All right. Awesome. So you end all the person all the signature strikes, right? Correct. Correct. So would you say you end the majority of the drone program? Um. Yes, but the majority of the drone program isn't useful right now. So. Okay. Now. What, what is the process for uh, for identifying someone well enough that we can do a personality strike? Um, in the status quo, the government actually has an in-depth process of how personality strikes work. Um, you can go back to our definition of a personality strike in the 1AC for more details. Okay. okay. Now, a personality strike and signature strike, are these official terms used by the government or terms invented by experts? Actually, the government hasn't admitted that they use signature strikes. Um, they are actually essentially lying to the American people and saying that we don't. Um, but, however, we do use the term personality strike. Right, but, but my, my question was, does the government have these official definitions when they use drone strikes? Does the government follow these terms? Or are these terms invented by third-party people, independent people? Yes, the government follows these terms um, it, it, to the extent that they use personality strikes, but they lie when they, when they use Right, but well, well, my question is, were these terms invented by the government or by independent I'm groups? unsure on that, but I do know that they're used in the general um, expert the people who talk about this. Okay, now do you, can you explain the process for me of how exactly they verify someone enough to do a personality strike? Again, you sort of asked the same question earlier. You can go back to our definition of a personality strike. It explains it in more detail. Awesome. Basically, we have to have a high degree of confidence, and we also follow them extensively to make sure they're in a, in a place where we will kill less people. Okay, how do you find a high degree of confidence? High degree of confidence. Basically, in the status quo, we've seen them use some personality strikes, about a hundred of them, and we see that this works. So I don't want to like come and read a huge, right. you know, okay. um, 
governmental policy for you, but our, our um, definition of personality trait describes that well. Okay, now how often are innocent people killed with the signature strikes? Um, how often are innocent people killed with yeah. signature strikes? Yeah, I don't true. have an exact number for you right now. What we do know that is that an extensive number of militants are being killed, and these militants aren't actually a threat to the United States. But they are so militants. it's not just that civilians right. are being killed, it's that we're killing people who aren't a threat, and then creating a threat through terrorism because of people who didn't know about us before now know that we're just adamant killers. All right, no further questions. One minute, 30 seconds. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. We're going to look at a couple different aspects of their case today. First, the question of the resolution, which is the issue of topicality, and then secondly, some on-case responses. Now, as a mostly LD judge, you've probably not heard a lot of discussion about the resolution, but in team policy, it's very critical. We're given our resolution today, which is that the United States federal government should substantially reform its foreign military presence and or foreign military commitments. Now, the affirmative team has the choice to go with either commitments or uh, presence or both. Now, they've chosen mainly to go with commitments, but I'll address both of those in these two topicality arguments. The first is that if it's not a foreign military presence, not a foreign military presence. Um, let's look at the definition, actually, talking about what presence is defined as. This is from Edward Bruder, specialist in foreign affairs at the Foreign Affairs Defense and Trade Division of the uh, Congressional Research Service, who's pretty credible in this area. He defined presence in January 2007 as, quote, the United States maintains a global military presence to support foreign policy and military strategy. 
This report describes the worldwide distribution of U.S. military personnel and related concerns of Congress, unquote. What this is actually talking about is to establish a United States military presence, we have to have people, uh, actual members of the military, overseas in these different countries. What's the problem here? Why don't, why don't they fall under this definition? What the Reform Team deals with in their mandate is simply about ending a type of drone strike. Now, the United States has many different drone missions. They choose one of these drone, um, ty types of drone missions to stop. The issue here is that it actually doesn't include any sort of military personnel in, that, in, in any sort of foreign country. Uh, the drones are controlled, but the drones do not actually constitute a presence of our military. They're simply, uh, they're simply uh, machines or small planes, etc. Now let's look at my second topicality argument, which is that of commitments are internationally binding. Commitments are internationally binding. Now the affirmative team um, talks about how a commitment is just something that we agree to or some sort of agreement that we have with other countries. Now their mandate to end these drone strikes actually does not reform a, a commitment of our United States military. Let me define uh, commitments before we go any further. That's defined um, actually by uh, Terry L. Dibel uh, from the Masters of Arts and Law and Diplomacy, PhD from the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, etc. He said in June of 1980, but uh, definitions don't normally change over those years, and this is a very good definition of military commitments as defined as a term. And he said, quote, the word commitment is used very broadly. People say that the United States is committed to a particular policy when they mean only that the administration has adopted that policy, not that the country is in any sense bound to it. Yet the dictionary definition of commitment speaks of pledging or binding of an individual to a particular course of action, and a meaningful international commitment must include that element of a promise. Commitment is the antithesis of freedom. The test of its existence is that some restriction be imposed on a committed nation's absolute freedom of action." Unquote. Now, while it's a lengthy definition, let's just go in and look at what it actually said. To be committed to a policy is simply that we have a policy. It's not actually a foreign military commitment. A commitment in some way binds, or binds the United States from acting in certain ways. Now, drone strikes is a certain mission that we have on and off, depending on how many terrorists we believe to be in a certain country. And the United States can uh, send our drones in and have the drone mission. Now, that's not actually a commitment in that it doesn't bind any sort of action that we're taking. Now, let's move down to some more interesting, yes, more interesting arguments. And those are responses to the case. Now, I'd, I'd like to talk specifically about their inherency, talking about the signature drone strikes, and also that they're the majority. I have three responses. My first one is out of evidence credentials, evidence credentials. Now, the source that they cited for the fact that um, signature strikes are the majority of our drone strikes was from um, two authors at the Wall Street Journal with no credentials. They simply stated their names and that they were from this new source. Um, I checked in the evidence to make sure they weren't quoting anyone else, and they weren't. It was simply them stating that the uh, signature drone strikes are the majority. Now, as my partner asked in cross-examination, we're not entirely certain whether or not the term signature strikes is one used by the United States. Um, why does this even matter? It's because uh, signature strikes may just constitute a strike that is uh, slightly less accurate than what they're calling personal strikes. So what we're going to look at is, um, in the next two subpoints, the second subpoint is that a few civilian deaths very few civilian deaths. Um, this is from Peter Bergen um, and Jennifer Rowland from CNN, and they were quoting, actually, uh, uh, Pakistani military officials. And they said in the evidence, quote, in March 2011, Major General Deborah Mahmoud, uh, I think I said that right, acknowledged that the number of innocent people being killed is relatively low, and that most of the targets are hardcore militants. The first such public announcement but, or acknowledgement, rather, by a senior Pakistani military official." Unquote. Now, when people think of drone strikes, we have actually many drone strikes in Pakistan. That's where the majority of them are. Now, Pakistan, the affirmative team believes, has a major problem with the drone strikes that we have in that country. However, what, I, what we just looked at here is that a senior Pakistani military official just acknowledged that actually the drone strikes uh, killed relatively few civilian casualties, and the vast majority of our strikes only target the hardcore militants. Now, in cross-examination, they tried to make um, a, a bridge, or rather, a gap between the term militants and people that are actually part of Al-Qaeda. But what we're seeing here is that the militants that we've killed in Pakistan 
the Apexane actually believes they weren't hardcore militants, they were harming their country. Whether or not they're officially under the term Al-Qaeda or not, they are terrorists, which do cause terror in that region. My third response is that, again, that, mil that militants are not civilians. Militants are not civilians. Um, even if we were to, um, as, as the affirmative team said, if there is um, inaccuracy or if we target more people than we meant to, what we're actually looking at the statistics, what's actually happened, is that the people that we target, whether or not we meant to in this case, were all hardcore militants. So whether or not they were Al-Qaeda leaders, it actually, uh, in this case, it's irrelevant because the people we targeted were the hardcore militants that Pakistan actually was pointing out as well. So looking um, to kind of sum up their case in a, in a couple sentences, or well, I'll probably take more than that because I've got a minute. But what we're looking at right now is um, a fact that we're, they've tried to separate personal strikes from signature strikes and make there a big difference. However, what we're seeing now is that signature strikes are actually on the decrease because we kill very, very few civilians. Um, the accuracy of the program has actually increased. As Pakistan actually admitted, they have uh, a very few civilian deaths. And we're, only, we're simply we're killing the vast majority of um, hardcore militants in that country. So whether or not we've used signature strikes in the past, whether or not the United States has admitted it, we don't really see a gap, simply that we have, uh, we sometimes target specific people, such as Al-Qaeda leaders, and other times we get groups of the hardcore militants. But we see no actual problem with civilian deaths in this case. So for national security to keep after these terrorists, I would ask you to reject the affirmative team's plan and vote for the status quo. Thank you very much. All right, well, to start off, congratulations to your team for bringing yeah, you Thank you. Thank you. All right, now starting off under your topicality argument. Yep. First of all, this is kind of a weird question, but do you agree that the resolution is written in English? Yes. Do you agree that English has certain rules of grammar? I would agree that, yes. Do you agree that the resolution follows those rules of grammar? Well, every sentence does have grammar, yes. So okay, we can definitely thank you. look at that. All right, and the resolution, which you stated in your mm -hmm. speech, is military an adjective a describing word of our presence or commitments, or is it a noun? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm not saying that it wasn't a, a military. Um, what we're talking about is whether it's actually our military's presence, whether drones are a presence of okay. the military, and whether it's a military commitment. Cool, thank you. I actually have some questions about that. Sure. So do you agree that our case mainly deals with commitment? Um, as you said in your cross-examination, yes. I was just okay. covering the basis. So um, yeah. Would you agree that we're bound to the course of action of drone strikes in the status quo? Yes, the definition that I actually brought up said that being bound to oh, sure. actually see that definition. Yeah. That being bound to a course of action does not uh, does not actually make it a commitment. Okay, thank you. Well, sure, we'll be addressing that. Um, now, do you agree that drones are of a military nature? Um, they are of a military nature, okay. but they are not a commitment. It's a type of policy, not a commitment. Okay, thank you. Um, now, I did have a really quick clarification sure, question. Sure, no problem. Um, I thought I heard you say that we don't use um, signature strikes in the status quo. Did you ever say that? I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss it. Oh, what, what I'm today. talking about is that um, there's not such a gap between the two, like that we would use signature strikes in one area and then specific ones in another. Okay. It depends on whether or not we have a specific cool. target or not. Cool, thank you. Um, that answers my question. Um, is it ever right to kill civilians if it can be avoided? Um, no, and if you okay. bring that up, we can cool. uh, I believe that's true. Right. Sure. All right, and did you bring up any evidence that these as you call quote unquote hardcore militants were a threat to the United States? Um, whether or not they're a threat to the United States specifically, like they would come and attack us? No. Pakistan okay. viewed them as hardcore militants, which they're having so a So right Pakistan viewed them as hardcore militants. Okay, thank you. That well, in here, that up. Yes. All right. Um, do you agree that civilians are not the only ones killed by our signature strikes? Um, correct. We kill terrorists. Oh, uh, okay, thank you. We'll be sure, addressing no that now. Um, do you believe that, do you as the negative team believe that it's, it is effective to waste time, money, and weapons on people who are not a threat to the United States of America? I believe to prevent future actions um, targeting hardcore militants who we have, who are actively in a war with, who align themselves okay. with terrorists. Um, so you should target did you, us. But did you bring up any evidence that we're actually at, in a war with these? Militant groups that you the specific ones killed in Pakistan. Um, I, I don't I don't have evidence that they were under Al Qaeda. Okay. They were but you don't have evidence that we we are at war with these specific militants. <coughs> militants are at war with basically everyone. So I'm not okay. okay. That's All true. right. Thank you. We'll no be problem. addressing that. No
A lawyer in Yemen tweeted in May, Dear Obama, when a U.S. drone missile kills a child in Yemen, the father will go to war with you. Guaranteed. This quote from the Center for Civilians and Conflict in Columbia Law School in 2012 shows why we have an ineffective and inefficient policy regarding our drones, how it's actually creating terrorism, which will make it much harder for the United States to combat in a war on terror. All right, I'm going to be going down the flow and right now and addressing the arguments my opponent brought up in her last speech. First off with the issue of topicality. All right, so she talked about uh, how there, we don't really have a foreign military presence. As we said before, our case is mainly dealing with our foreign military commitment. All right, and then she said we have no military person now because this, there's nobody there because these are unmanned aerial vehicles, so there's no military personnel. However, it is our commitment to a foreign military. We are committed to this policy and it's completely topical. And then she uh, redefined commitment. However, there is more than one definition of commitment and as the affirmative team, we are allowed to define commitment. I'd like to bring you back to our definition of commitment. This is from the Free Dictionary. It says the act of binding yourself. The act of binding yourself. So we are binding ourselves and the negative team agree that we are bound to this strong policy. So they are agreeing that we are bound to this policy. It's a commitment that we are reforming. All right, now that we have that uh, cleared up, I'm going to be moving on to her uh, piece about evidence credentials. Evidence credentials. She said, we don't have a, the evidence credentials. She said it was from a magazine. Actually, this, these are facts in the status quo. Signature strikes are increasing. I have uh, a piece of evidence here talking about the number of signature strikes that Obama has committed. And this is from Pierre Zubar Shah. He is the fellow at the Council of Foreign Relations, October 10th, 2012. It says, quote, over the three and a half years of Barack Obama's presidency, signature strikes, which are attacks based on general targeting of groups rather than specific targeting of individuals, have dramatically increased. At Obama's direction, the CIA has carried out 292 such secret attacks in the first three and a half years of his presidency. That is five times more than the Bush administration carried out. There is little, if any, transparency on the decision-making process that goes into these, and many international human rights law experts believe they result in extrajudicial murder. These signature strikes, also sometimes more bluntly referred to in national security circles as crowd kills, are often where the U.S. is making its worst mistakes in killing civilians, military analysts, and human rights workers." Unquote. So there are some numbers from the, for, for the negative team uh, and from a very credible source, the fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, showing the number of signature strikes that have happened with President Obama. All right, now that we have that cleared up as well, we're going to be moving on to her point about few civilian deaths. Few civilian deaths. All right, I'm going to be talking about a couple of different things here. First, I'm going to be looking at militants. Militants, all right. I'm going to be talking about militants and how militants actually pose no threat to the United States, but because we kill them, Al-Qaeda uses that as a recruiting tool saying, look, 
the United States is killing all of these people who are absolutely no threat to them. They're killing these people, and then people join Al-Qaeda because the U.S. is terrorizing them. All right, I'm going to be reading this piece of evidence about how militants aren't a threat. Militants aren't a threat. And this is from Professor James Clitero and Stephen Sonnenberg at Stanford Law School and Professor Sarah Naki in September 2012. It says, quote, the label militants also fails to distinguish between so-called high-value targets with alleged leadership roles in Al-Qaeda or anti-U.S. Taliban factions and low-level alleged insurgents with no apparent access or means of posing a serious or imminent threat to the U.S. National security analysts and the White House itself have found that the vast majority of those killed in drone strikes in Pakistan have been low-level alleged militants. The New American Foundation reported that fewer than 13% of drone strikes carried out under Obama have killed a militant leader. Since 2004, some 49 militant leaders have been killed in drone strikes, consisting of 2% of all drone-related fatalities. Unquote. So we can see that we are killing people who pose absolutely no threat to the United States. We are killing people who pose absolutely no threat to the United States. So even though people are saying, oh look, we're killing militants, that's a good thing. These people aren't a threat to us, we shouldn't be killing them because it creates terror. I'm going to be talking about how this creates terror in my next piece of evidence. It says signature strikes cause terrorism. Signature strikes cause terrorism. And this is from the Business Record News in March 21st. 2013, it says, quote, the UN uh, took note, excuse me, took note of an overwhelming body of opinion in Pakistan that holds a large number of those killed in drone strikes are innocent civilians, including women and children, which promotes radicalism. This is not surprising considering the policy of signature strikes and or crowd killing that regards every military aged man as a legitimate target. Clearly indiscriminate killings do not bother Washington but they fuel anger in the affected areas and generate sympathy for the extremists, making it much harder for the government to defeat militancy." Unquote. We are making our job so much harder than it needs to be. We are creating terrorism in the status quo. A Pentagon official actually said that it is one of the best recruiting tools that Al-Qaeda has. These drone policies are one of the best recruiting tools Al-Qaeda has. And this is from Mark Perry in 2013. It says, quote, The seemingly endless war on terrorism is wearing thin on senior military officials who are increasingly loath to explain how luring Pakistan's streets with collateral damage will bring the war to an end. The drone program is a classic ethics-based operation, the effect of which is that it's ineffective. A Pentagon military planner regularly notes, it's the best recruiting tool that extremists have, unquote. We can see how we have a very ineffective and inefficient policy because we are creating more terrorists. We are killing people who have done absolutely nothing to hurt us and creating enemies. Certainly, it is not something we want to do. All right, then I'm going to be moving on to her point about how Pakistan doesn't care about the problem. Pakistan doesn't care about the problem. The reason we're doing it is not because of Pakistan. We're doing it for the United States. No matter what Pakistan cares, it is our U.S. policy that we're trying to fix right now. We are trying to stop terrorism. We are at war with terror, and we need to stop, and we need to create less terrorists. As we can see, the status quo is simply not doing that right now. I'm going to leave you with just one thought from the John Laser in April 23, 2013. This is a young man who lives in the Middle East. He says, quote, just six days ago, my village was struck by a drone, an attack that terrified thousands of simple, poor farmers. The drone strike and its impact tore my heart, much as the tragic bombings in Boston last week tore your hearts and also mine. What radicals had previously failed to achieve in my village, one drone strike accomplished in an instant. There is now an intense anger and growing hatred of America. And folks, we can see that we're creating terrorists in the status quo. Something we definitely should not be doing. So, we ask that you would help stop the war on terror and vote affirmative. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so now, your pieces of evidence that you had talking about how um, it actually creates more militancy, more terrorism when we yeah. uh, have drone strikes. Mm -hmm. Now, that did refer to the point um, that you were making that killing civilians does cause this. Uh, is that correct? Is that the links that your evidence was talking about? 
Which piece of evidence? I read, so I'm, I'm sure. sure you read examples such as when we've killed innocent people, you started off with a piece of evidence that said that as well. When we do that, then that turns more people to terrorism. Yes. Okay. So did you actually bring up any statistics talking about how many civilians we've been, uh, have been killed? Um, I did not bring up a specific number, but I did bring up the number of signature strikes that we've done, and we know that signature strikes have killed innocent people. Okay, did you have evidence for that in your speech that I can take a look at? Um, I believe that you can ask me another question. Sure, no problem. Um, I was actually going to look for another piece of evidence that you had mm -hmm. um, talking about how the militants are not a threat to the United States. Yeah. That one is There's the numbers one. Okay, thank you. And if you have another question, you can go ahead and ask me that too. Sure, yeah. Now, is it your stance that, for instance, um, if someone in Pakistan, for instance, or, or Yemen, were to join Al-Qaeda, but they're, they're not a leader, they're not really anyone important, they just join, would you, would you define them as a militant? As a militant? I'm not sure. Okay, so the evidence that you were there's the evidence, thank you. <laughs> so the evidence that you were talking about how um, we don't how, how we're only targeting with this type of drone site, then we only really hit a low level militants. Is that what you're also saying? Yes. Okay, so is it your stance as the affirmative team that we should only target the leaders? We need to be targeting the high level, high value terrorists as our mandate. Okay, so you're, the point then, how, would you, how you would like to change the system is that we only target the leaders. The high value targets. Okay, so that's now what if I there, think. sure. Now if there was a group of Al-Qaeda militants um, going through Pakistan, they don't really have a place where they just stay, they roam around. Mm -hmm. um, how would drone strikes then take care of a group of Al-Qaeda? A group of Al-Qaeda, it depends if they're actively plotting against the United States, if they're an imminent threat, essentially. Okay, but under the personal drone strikes that you talked about, or personal drone strikes, strikes. yeah, personal drone strikes, we would not actually be able to take out a group of Al-Qaeda, is that correct? Because it targets specific people? Well, the thing is, it's a high-value target. If these are not high-value targets, then no, we shouldn't be taking them out. If they're okay, not actively sure. plotting against if, the United if States, it's a group of we can't Al just go around hurting these people. Yeah, I understand what you're getting at. So now if there's a group of Al-Qaeda with a couple leaders, but then also just a group of the militants, mm -hmm. should we only target the leaders in that case? We are, as our mandate says, we are specifically wanting to target the high-value terrorists. Okay, thank you. And that's all the questions I have. Great, right, your turn. You're welcome. <clears throat> Alright, next Signature targeting not ended. Signature targeting not ended. Now the affirmative team's mandate specifically says that we're going to end signature uh, end signature drone strikes, but they don't end the practice of signature targeting. It's going to become important later as we get to the disadvantage of looking at how the United States will just turn to alternatives. My second response against the mandate is that of a solvency point, solvency of no government policy. Now, as we looked back to the YMC cross-examination, the affirmative speaker said that the government refuses to admit that signature strikes exist because they want to be secretive about it. I would argue that the alternative reason is that the government doesn't call on personality and signature strikes. In fact, let's look at a piece of the affirmative team's evidence. Under Justification 3 of signature strikes should be eliminated, they read a quote, uh, or referencing the opinion of Robert Grinner, who was the head of the CIA's Counterterrorism Center from 2004 to 2006, so a government official on the program, they were citing him to talk about how signature drone strikes are bad, and nowhere in the piece of evidence does it say the term signature drone strikes. It talks about targeting in a certain way, but it does not say the official term signature drone strikes. So if you're to pass the affirmative plan and ban signature drone strikes, that doesn't mean anything to the government, because that term isn't an official term to the government. My third point here is high degree of confidence. Now looking to the evidence that they provided in their 1AC of what a personality drone strike means, what a personality drone strike entails is a high degree of confidence. 
I don't know if it's just me, but it's pretty easy for the government to get around that by, I don't know, recruiting people in charge of the drone program who are very confident in their decisions or something. Like, it feels like the government would be, it seems like the government would be very easily able to get around that if the affirmative team mandates that they have to have a high degree of confidence before targeting a certain group. So I don't see how the affirmative team's plan can actually solve that issue. Let's go to the inherency point of signature strikes are the majority. We're going to basically look at a generic piece of evidence that the majority of the drone strikes are actually a good thing. This is from the Agency for Arms Pass, partially quoting John Brennan, who's the new director of the CIA, in April of last year. And he's talking about Osama bin Laden's, before he died, of course, his opinion on the drone strikes. He said, quote, Osama bin Laden bemoaned disaster after disaster inflicted by United States drone strikes on al-Qaeda before he was killed, and even rolled changing his terror group's name. President Obama's top counterterrorism advisor, John Brennan, said al-Qaeda was losing badly under a huge United States assault, was a shadow of its former self, and that his core leadership would soon be no longer relevant. Brennan argued that a relentless United States drone campaign and other pressure had left al-Qaeda seriously weakened and unable to replace wiped out leaders. And here's an important part, last sentence. They're struggling to attract new recruits, end quote. That's a very important quote there from the current CIA director back in April of last year, saying that Al-Qaeda, because of the drone program, is struggling to get new recruits. The drone program is not in any way helping them to get new recruits. The drone program is so successful in killing Al-Qaeda that they're struggling to get new recruits because the people don't necessarily want to get killed all the time. Or not all the time, you can only get killed once, I guess. But I'm sure that. So now let's go down to the justification one of terror increase. Now my best response to this is that they cannot solve. The fact is that terrorists hate the United States. They're going to find something to be mad at us about. Right now, that happens to be drone strikes. If you pass the affirmative team's plan, the terrorists aren't going to say, oh, well, I guess we can't be mad at the United States anymore. They're going to find something else to get mad at us about. They're terrorists, they're not logical. Now let's move down to their justification two of our reputation is decreased by the drone strikes. Now, as Mike Carter said, the groups that we're actually targeting are dangerous groups. Uh, let's look at a piece of evidence now from the Associated Press, July of 2012. They said, quote, United States officials say Pakistan has proved incapable or unwilling to, targets mili to target militants the United States considers dangerous. So the CIA drone campaign, considered the most effective tool in the United States counterterrorist arsenal, will continue, end quote. So these militants that the United States are targeting are considered dangerous and a threat by the United, by basically the United States, uh, the national security advisors of the United States. They are considered dangerous. Now let's move down finally to justification three of signature strikes to be eliminated. We already went quickly over this piece of evidence, but I'd just like to point out the evidence does not mention the term signature strikes. It, it, uh, it talks about a specific form of targeting and such, but does not actually say the term. <coughs> now let's move down into the disadvantage, which is of alternatives used. Alternatives used. We're going to look at, sub, at a few sub points here. Sub point A is signature targeting. Signature targeting. Now, as we look at the affirmative team's plan text, their plan bans a signature drone strike, but they do not ban the practice of signature targeting. Now, according to them, what signature targeting means is just targeting a group, a supposed group of people who could be terrorists. Now, my partner's been talking about the argument that they are indeed terrorists. We're going to be talking here about that, about here though about what alternatives the United States would turn to. The sub point B is reason for signature strikes. Reason for signature strikes. Now, the United States federal government isn't just carrying out signature strikes because because whatever, because willy-nilly, they just want to. They're carrying signature strikes out because they can't identify the specific terrorists that they're trying to target. If they, according to the firm team's definition, if for a personality strike, you need to know the person's name. So in this case, they obviously want to kill the terrorists in that group, they just don't know, they just don't know their name, so it's classified as a signature strike by these, by these independent parties. So what this means is that the government does want to kill these people. They do want to target these militants. So if you pass the affirmative team's plan, these people won't stop being targeted. Signature